The King Who Never Smiled. Once upon a time, in a far away kingdom, there lived a king who had everything. Well, he had everything that you could buy with money or valuables. He had huge piles of coins and trinkets. He could do whatever he wanted every day and go wherever he liked. The king always ordered all the novelties that people longed for to be bought and brought to the palace. However, for some reason, this royal monarch was not at all happy. And he had no idea why all this wealth brought no joy to him. Everywhere he looked, the diamonds shone. Everywhere his hand reached, gold glittered. As soon as he opened his mouth, his servants put the finest delicacies straight in. And so the king pondered and was scratching his chin when it suddenly occurred to him. Call for a scribe for me now. The crowd of servants suddenly began to race to see who would lead the scribes first, almost breaking their legs. They hoped to put a smile on the king's face for at least a split second. If they could only immediately grant him his wish. Indeed, the scribes were brought in a flash. But there was no celebration. Write this down, his majesty ordered, without a greeting or a smile. That the one who pleases me most, I, the brightest and richest ruler, and puts a smile on my face, will be richly rewarded, said the king, looking over his shoulder of one of the poor scribes. He was such a nervous man that he hadn't even noticed what he was writing. The envoys then flew to all corners of the country to announce the news. It didn't take long for entertainers to roll into the castle. Wizards, goldsmiths and jewellers, artists, fortune tellers and many more. Each of them wanted to show His Majesty what they could do. With an annoyed look on his face, the king sat down on his lavish throne. It was built in the middle of an ornate, lovely hall. Even on that throne, there was more gold than wood. Around the king's majesty, the counts and countesses and counsellors flocked. Even though the king didn't seem to need any counsellors, because no one could help him. Let the first entertainer enter, one of the counsellors cried out. The heavy, pure gold door swung open, and an acrobat entered the hall. He jumped up, did somersaults, flips, and as he hopped and circled the hall, he stopped right in front of the king and stuck out his tongue. And... He wiggled his ears at the same time. It looked really funny. The whole hall rumbled with laughter. But the king just raised an eyebrow in irritation above his right eye. Everyone fell silent at once. Out, the counsellor ordered quickly. Let another one enter. This time, a young artist came in with a slow dance step. She was nearly hovering. Dancing so gracefully to the rhythm of soft music in the background. For all present, 
This dance put a smile on their lips because her performance was truly wonderful. But the king only seemed to frown more and more. Out, the counselor ordered when he'd finally recovered from his daydream the dancer created. And so more and more candidates gradually lost their chance in getting rich. It started to look hopeless. One of the acrobats stuck one foot against the other in the middle of a difficult trick, and they fell to the marble floor. It wasn't clear if he'd done it on purpose, or if it was an accident. It was such a funny fall that everyone giggled for a while. Except the annoyed king, of course. At that moment, a little boy with a bouquet of wild strawberries in his hand emerged from the crowd. Are you hurt? He asked worriedly, holding out his hand to the acrobat to help him up. The whole hall looked in silence, once at the king, once at the pair in the middle of the hall, waiting to see what would happen. No one had yet dared to stand out from the crowd in the king's presence without permission to do so. The king rose sharply from his throne and walked slowly toward the pair. Angry lightning flashed from his eyes as all of the courtiers backed toward the wall. At that moment, they would rather be invisible. When the king was close to the two of them, he looked sternly into the acrobat's eyes. The poor man's knees shook from fear, then his hands, and in a moment he was completely shaking like a jelly. Then the king looked at the boy, but he looked back at him without fear. My king, taste it, said the boy fearlessly, holding out his bundle of wild strawberries. I don't know any fun tricks, so I picked these strawberries for you. The whole hall gasped loudly. The king plucked one strawberry. He looked at it carefully, smelled it and then put it in his mouth. Hmm, was all that he said. None of those present knew if it was a sign of joy or a sign of anger. At that moment, the left corner of the king's mouth rose, and then the right corner did too. It looked like the king was about to smile. He's smiling, someone said. A huge boulder fell from everyone's hearts. Truly, the king is smiling. He is smiling, an amazed counsellor cried. And the king indeed was smiling. He placed his hand lightly on the boy's head. You have brought me a truly valuable gift. I have already forgotten how beautiful ordinary things are. especially when someone gives them to me from the heart. I've got all my chambers full of treasures, he continued. People brought them to me to win my favor. They were convinced that this was exactly what I longed for. Well, I felt lonely and unhappy so far. I had no idea what I was lacking. But now I know. I was missing a sincere, true friendship all of the time. True friends, he said, with a tear rolling down his cheek. Tell me, what do you wish for, for putting a smile on my face? He asked the boy. I wish that the smile on your face will never disappear, so that you make us all happy, the boy replied. I believe I can grant you your wish, the king said, smiling even more and taking the boy in his arms. 
There was a loud applause throughout the hall. The king had a great feast prepared and invited people from all over the kingdom. And from that day forward, he began to value and enjoy even the most ordinary of things. And yes, he did find a reason to smile every day. He'd learned to be happy from the wisdom of a child with a bundle of wild strawberries. (laughs) ¶¶